thank you so much for being here. I have to say that I'm really happy of being in Romania. It's my first time. Uh, for you to know, um, I work at Disneyland Paris, but I'm Colombian. And uh, uh, there's two countries or three countries in the world which we don't need a visa. One is Russia, Russia, second one is Romania. So I was so happy when I came here and I checked that I needed a visa. I was so, I, I feel so welcome as well. So uh, thank you so much once again for the, this kind of invitation. Um, so yes, today I'm gonna talk about how companies can look into the future. Uh, my objective here is to give you some insights in terms of methodology. Uh, Disney is a very huge company, uh, quite complex, uh, and I want you to get some idea about how can you manage this complexity in roles of either foresight or innovation management. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think I will have to say like this if you want to, right. Yeah, so I think it's not working. Um, so uh, Walt Disney was, uh, was a visionary, an entrepreneur, and a creative genius. He used to say to his teams, first thing, second dream, third belief, and finally there. Um, and this is, the, future, this is the, the, the principle that grounds the futurist mindset at Disneyland Paris. So start, so start uh, by exploring and understanding uh, the dynamics of change and use it as a resource uh, to imagine possible futures for our experience in entertainment, retail, and tourism. And then doing it, and then doing it uh, by engaging uh, teams in discussions and conversations about the future. But at the end, um, I think you have to uh, advance a little bit faster. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> And then, uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, drive decisions and actually take actions on a strategy and make it accountable from today. Um, uh, becoming a future prepared organization is not an easy task. Uh, research shows that um, uh, future prepared companies are 33% more profitable compared to the average, average ones. But the, reality, but the reality is that only 10% of the companies uh, know how to do it. Um, and, and I don't know if you could help me to go a little bit faster. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, and the reason is, um, uh, as, as foresight managers, we face uh, many obstacles, sometimes coming from the mindset of the company, uh, sometimes coming uh, from the frameworks that are really sometimes hard to apply. But uh, from my own experience working on these domains for about more than seven years, uh, I've ha I found really complicated actually to match these visions of the future uh, to the reality of our business problems. Um, so when I get into this role, my objective, when I get into this role, my objective was to find a very practical way uh, of using foresight to guide the strategy and actually support the business uh, of, uh, processes and transformation. Um, so that's how I came up with a foresight system that actually acts into three axes. Culture, corporate culture, a strategic planning and then innovation management. Let's start with corporate culture. Um, so uh, normally as foresight managers, thanks. Uh, so normally as foresight managers innovation, we used to uh, run workshops, we do internal trainings. Sometimes we, we, do, we, pre we prepare some trend cards and we share it with the teams. But the reality is that people forget them easily if it's not related to their daily tasks. Plus, at a scale of our organization like Disney, uh, more than 15,000 people is just not sustainable or scaling time. Um, so that's how I came with uh, the idea of a start working into um, a common language, create a common language and framework about the future. And this is how we did it. So we start, um, yeah, so we start with a uh, um, identif identifying what are, what are the drivers that may have the most impact for the business uh, for the next 10 years. Remember that Disney, when we talk about Disney, it's not just entertainment. We're talking about tourism, we're talking about retail, we're talking about food. Uh, so it's a really complex world here. Um, these drivers, uh, 
normally, uh, when you do a pure strategic planning analysis, they are not always taken into account. I'm talking about drivers such as the fact uh, that there's an increase in uh, mental diseases in Europe or the fact that um, there is an expected uh, migration flow of talent from Paris to the West Coast and the South. So for the first time, when we do this exercise, managers, they actually realize uh, that these factors were actually building blocks of, our, the, of the company's future. Um, then what we did, there was uh, a research for about two or three months, that what we did is that um, at the end of the day, we had 32 factors. And we, we brought our managers and we created um, multi-sectoral teams and we asked them to make some combinations about these factors. So what happened if, if this uh, so factor in healthcare like mental disease uh, match with over tourism, which is also a factor that we're seeing a lot now, nowadays, especially impacting Paris. Um, so um, uh, at the end, we created this co these, these combinations in several workshops managed with the teams. And all of this process end up into uh, seven strategic challenges for the long term. Um, yeah. Seven, seven main challenges. Um, these challenges, uh, far from being constructed as objectives to the future, like we would do it in a strategic planning exercise, uh, they were constructed as forces in contradiction, evolving in, uh, in access of uncertainty. Um, so if we take an example, uh, one of the challenges, and I'm, so, I'm sorry, I cannot talk about all our challenges, it's uh, part of uh, the things I cannot say, but I would like just to give you an example of those. So social isolation is one of the challenges that we define within the teams. And basically what it wants to say is that be, uh, given the, 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 the climate change and given uh, the, the strikes that we are experiencing in Paris, if you have following the news of Yellow Vest, etc., or because simply people want to stay at home watching Netflix or Disney Plus, um, uh, people may not want to come to the park. And then entertainment could change. So uh, when we address the challenge, we say, so this challenge, we have to analyze it into a polarities of customers' motivations and behaviors from one side, loneliness. Um, today, and there's a recent uh, study that, that came out last uh, couple of weeks saying that more than 52% of French, they prefer to eat alone. Uh, so, and, and then if we scale it into millennial and, uh, and new generation, then it's going, it's, it's going higher. So from one side, we have this, this loneliness, but also this need of freedom. Um, and the other side, we have this natural search for bonding. So uh, when we, when we um, defined this challenge, our idea was to make our, also our managers understand that the future is not, is not certain. Uh, uh, and it's also moving into a polarities of these two types of uncertainties. Um, after doing this exercise, uh, we said, okay, we did a great job, we have seven good challenges, and then, uh, uh, yeah, and then, and then we said, um, all right, but uh, how are we put it into actions? So first of all, uh, these challenges uh, became part of the corporate culture. People start talking about long-term challenges and that was a really good win for us. Um, and at the same time for us, it became uh, the lenses, that was the slide before, uh, that we start using to analyze change. Uh, if you, I don't know if any of you guys work into foresight, if you don't have these lenses, uh, you can analyze everything that happens in the world. Uh, so this is really necessary, I believe, when you start doing a foresight uh, a study or, or research for your own company. But then after doing this exercise, yeah, we said this is great, we do that an amazing job. Um, and then we said, okay, how can we convert it into actions? Uh, I work uh, as part of a business strategy team, so they're asking me for accountable actions at the end of the day. So in that reflection, we realized that we were missing a system of measurement. Um, and basically, the idea is that these challenges, they're evolving. So when I told you about this 50% of French that prefer to eat alone, uh, it, it changed in time. It changed in time because there are many factors that are impacting that simple element, that simple, simple, simple event. So we need a system to measure the evolution of all these factors, and at the same time, we need a system to measure the impact of these evolutions in our different lines of business. 
So now the problem gets much more complicated. Um, so what we came up as a solution uh, was to um, basically uh, start in uh, yeah, thanks. So basically, we start uh, uh, at the at the first time uh, a basic horizon scanning, uh, which is basically an idea of collecting uh, a really good mass of information coming from the news, but especially, and I really want to to. Uh, um, make an, uh, an accent on this, uh, insights from the people. So insight of things that you see in the street, th things that we observe about our customers in the park, listening our employees, our, our cast members, and understanding how they experience their, uh, their, their daily lives. So all of that we scanning, and what we call it signals of change, and all these signals of change, we pass it through the filter of our lenses, which are the long-term challenges. And at the end, we came up with some metrics uh, of impact um, that we did for the, for the short, for the middle, and long term. So there are three. Oh, yeah. um, um, basically, this tool, uh, which ideally is, 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 is measuring the impact of each of these signals. We had more than 80 signals uh, for this year, 2019. So we measure. So we measure. Thanks. So we measure the impact of all of the signals, uh, and then at the, a grade of a level of certainty. This, this tool, um, this tool has a, a rational intention. Of course, we have to measure impact and certainty. But this tool is basically a creative tool, and what we're doing is that we're using this tool to approach the teams and say, so you're working in an environment. So let me tell you what is, go what is going on in the environment, but also let me tell you what is going on in tourism. And this is a way for people to look forward. When you go into workshops and just to make these kind of uh, sessions with people, they get lost because there are many things happening in the world. But when you map it in this way, it's easier for people to react. And, and that way, it's also easier for people to put in place or put in perspective the current strategies. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And then the last axe of our work is innovation. So I'm both part of the business strategy team and of the innovation team. So I have this chance of seeing how these signals of change become into actually products and experiences. Um, and this is the normally path that a company should follow. So we scan of these signals. We see which of these signals are strong, which are weak. And then using all these resources, we build hotspots of innovation opportunity. The reality is that in innovation, um, in dif depends also the company, but we already have some specific challenge. So we have a vision that was established by the long-term plan, basically. Um, and then um, what we're trying to say, what we're trying to do actually is, is, is taking a different approach. And is we're starting from the pain points from our customers, but also from business operations. And we're using and we're using the the foresight framework, the seven challenges we already talked, uh, to look forward. So basically, a, a, a cat member or an employee that has a really simple problem, like I have to clean my pool, uh, so give me a robot to clean my pool. We can start conversations about the future, say. Uh, so is it really a robot? So you know, the, the idea of doing this framework is that it gives arguments for people um, and reasons to think about the future. Uh, if I give you one example in particular, besides of this one that I, I, I've just said, um, we know that, uh, you know, are you ready to conclusion? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, one, one example, just, just to say, um, as, as we have seen in, in demographic trends, that are an increase, an increase of single households and monoparental families. And this naturally is impacting how we are delivering entertainment. So the family of two parents and one kid maybe is not happening anymore. Um, so if we take a simple pain point that actually we live in today, which is waiting lines, for example, we know that uh, when you wait, the wait alone 
feels longer than if you're waiting groups. And that makes sense because you don't know anyone to talk, plus you get shy, you're not going to talk to your neighbor. Uh, so one particular pain point that we, that we start thinking is how can we improve this waiting experience for the monoparental families? Uh, or for single people, that they come to the park. We have a proportion of millennials coming to the park that in some way they would like to make friends but they don't know how to do. So we, uh, we take this single pain point and we pass it once again through our framework and then we say which of the challenges, which are main drivers, uh, could be a potential uh, 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 mechanism to get into a solution. And we will say in this case, well, we can use the, the, we can use the driver of isolation, isolation because when you are single, uh, Normally, maybe you don't want to, you, if, and if you're going alone, maybe it's because you don't want to meet people. So there's an act of loneliness of, no, I really don't want to be in contact. I just want to do my ride and I go home. But there's also an act of bonding and it's, uh, yeah, I'm single, but still it would be cool to meet someone. And there's also an, an act of, uh, of connection. It's, uh, I'm 100% connected, uh, but there's also another act of, I'm tired of being connected. If I'm at Disney, it's because I really want to disconnect and I want to have another experience. So this kind of, of hot spots of opportunity, then they become, a, for example, a way of how can we create bonding between single people or monoparental families, uh, and at the same time, not using uh, a technology or not using digital applications, which are 80% of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the cases, the solution that people used to address. They're, oh, well, you, you, just, you just download an app and you entertain. Uh, uh, for us, our principle basically is uh, creating these uh, memorial uh, souvenirs. And basically, they're created, they're, they're created by bonding, uh, but by connecting people. So once again, uh, this is a framework that uh, allows uh, us and I think also other companies to think into the future, but it's putting your feet is still in, on the ground and saying we have pain points from uh, in our daily basis and we have to solve them. So I want to I want to I want to I want to end this to wrap up this this talk, uh, saying saying two things or three. Um, so in foresight managers and innovation managers, we mainly change management change managers. Um, I don't mean that the scanning and the analysis of trends is it's not enough. I mean, we're just doing 20% of the job. We have to put it into action. And to put it into action, uh, we have to work into culture, strategy, planning, and then innovation management. It start by creating a common framework about the future uh, for the people to have the resources to talk about it. Then uh, measure that, measure how the evolution, measure how, what is the impact, and at the end of the day, transform that into business opportunities. Uh, that's it, thanks a lot. So we have time for maybe one or two questions. I have one here. Hi, Carolina. I would like to ask you how long it takes all those three processes that you mentioned before. Uh, well, um, that's a really good question. So the first, the first process, it took uh, three months uh, to gather the research and the engagement of the stakeholders. The second one, uh, we started, actually everything started, happened this year. Uh, the second one, we started about um, March, and then we are about to finish now with all these measuring systems, uh, and the innovation, ha it has been happening transversal. So, um, it, it, uh, I mean, it, it takes time, but I would really recommend to start by the culture. If you, don't, if you don't break silos, and if you don't really manage to change people's mentality, you can build the best measurement system, but people, they aren't going to believe it. One more here. Hi, uh, so thank you first for the energizing uh, presentation. I must confess I wish the previous one was shorter a bit and this one was longer. Um, so, no offense, Mihai, not because of you. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the question is realistically, there's no one else from Disney here. Realistically speaking, uh, do any, uh, does any company in this world really uh, do this properly? I mean, do, do they listen to you? Do they uh, take your plans and implement them? Or how does this really work? Yeah, 
that's an amazing question. So uh, the answer is no. I mean, I've talked with hundreds of consultants, people working on Farsight across the, across the world, because as I said, I had the challenge of, of make it work. Um, so anybody came, has this process like this, I think that the good thing happening with us is that we start um, basically seriously from the culture and people build the frameworks by their own. When I, when I arrived and I then I, uh, there's, we have a program at Disney that is the Global Disney Futurist, they told me, yeah, you have to run scenarios and then, uh, and then I arrived the first meeting, okay guys, we're gonna run scenarios, everybody got panic. Because like, vision, no, 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 you don't take the vision. So we're like, okay. We're going to just do a workshop, so we're just going to imagine. So it depends the way you sell it. It depends the way how you address people. They, they didn't know that we're going in this way. They just thought that we were just playing with some cards. And at the end, they saw, ah, oh, that's a challenge. Oh, actually, that's an strategic challenge. And then when I told them, yeah, but the challenge is moving, so we have to measure it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that I, I, I work also in transformation in the company, and transformation goes by like this. You have to follow this process really gradually, and you have to involve people and make that the, make feel the people uh, the creators of this, and not you imposing frameworks, which is the problem that I feel that some of, of colleagues we face uh, about this is the framework to do and this division, and then it's so complex, and then you match. Uh, this this was really simple for them, and they got it. So I think that the winning is when people when I said when people start talking about about long-term challenges, I said, okay, I, I'm doing good my job. So I think uh, really it has to, it has to I, I guess it has to start by that, by making people um, believe that it makes sense by uh, give them the tools for, the, for doing by themselves. Can we do one more? Yeah. Um, hi, a very interesting presentation. I'm a foresight practitioner from, from Romania. Um, and I wanted, uh, I've seen that uh, you have uh, their uh, trends or uh, uh, movements with uh, ranked by certainty, level of certainty. And I want to ask if you take into consideration the risks for, for Disneyland, the, uh, meaning uh, low probability but quite uh, high impact. And if uh, are int they are interested in scenarios for... Uh, you mean wild cases. cards? Wild etc. cards, yeah. especially, um, but even lower, yeah. like ne more, less desirable uh, yeah. <laughs> evolutions. Uh, well, basically, um, we are not following this approach now. Um, once again, we need to make the things simple for people to buy it. Once they get into the process, we introduce this part that is kind of a little bit more complicated. Basically, what he's saying is, yeah, things that are high in powerful, uh, but still low probable. Um, it, what I think that, um, I mean, I, yeah, um, but I have other, other idea, but what, what, what I want to say is um, one thing that really worked in this exercise is that um, when we built this mapping, uh, it was built in my team, so three people. So, okay, what do you feel? Level of certainty, we did a lot of research, but it's, it's not like funny like this. Uh, but after, the idea was going to see the people. So if there's a signal that is impacting waste management, I go to see the, the waste management manager and say, so how do you feel about this? Uh, what is your reaction? And that's, that this is when I'm saying that the signals are, are I, I believe, are mostly coming from uh, experts and people in, in field. Um, and this is an out, an input that is really important when you when you measure this, when you make this matrix. Um, and the other thing that really worked in the exercise is that we ask ourselves the impact of all of these signals in different times of, of horizon of time. And this is really useful because when you're doing a strategic planning, you know that uh, you do short, medium, and long-term planning. So it, it, it gives really a, a, a resource for my manager to say, all right, I'm doing the short-term planning, so what should I take into account? Um, which is something that doing the scenarios, it's really hard because you're doing the scenarios normally for 10 years and, and, and more. Um, and then for the manager that has to present something for the next year, I don't have anything to bring. So, so we are doing an, a different approach. We're testing this basically because when we started with the idea of doing the scenarios, their reaction was, 
you're, so you're changing the vision of Disney, you cannot do that. So um, once again, it's, it's a gradual process. It's a testing phase. I think we're going in the good track, and then we will see the, the, the results in the, in the planning, in the strategic planning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina.